So I picked up this Korg. Uh, it's an electric piano. It's 88 keys. I got it really cheap. Um, it's like mechanical hammer key something. I don't know a lot about pianos. I just really wanted to learn. Um, but it has a dead key uh, in the mid-range. I think it's the G. It's either that one or that one. I think that's G anyway. Uh, C, D, E, F. Yeah, G. So it's one of those Gs. And um, found it quite quickly. You can't really play a lot without the G. So this is a really quick video to show how I've fixed that. Because um, a lot of the videos online just talk about hoovering up the dust that can get in the way of the sensors and that's definitely not the case here but the fix is still really easy oh, yeah. and I've put a cloth down there you can see just so I don't scratch the keyboard or the surface or anything so on here I've already started to take out the screws but effectively the screws you want to take out are the ones just on the edge all the way around going all the way around the edge uh, on this bar here, you can leave all of those in, including the ones at the edges. And then the other thing is you need to take the screws out of the middle here. Uh, this bar here, they all need to come out. So once you've got all the screws out, we're going to flip it around again. And the thing should come off. As long as you've taken all those screws out, and there's three different types. Okay, so, taking this off here, there's a little cable here. Because I took it off earlier just to have a quick look. I didn't put that back in probably, so it popped off, but that won't pop off. So when you take this off, just be really careful to not snag this wire. So I'm taking it out because it makes it easier to show you what's going on, but you don't need to remove this connector if you're happy with this space here just sitting on the side when you do this. So this gives you access to the keys. Um, they're not the kind that you just pull apart or anything like that. Uh, they're modules which are screwed in, and to get to those screws, there are screws in the back here, which I'll show you now. This panel here, it's got some extra screws in the back. Once you take those off, we'll get to the modules for the keys. More screw with these ones. Cool, that's panels out, so that should just lift off. Awesome, and right at the edge here, there's another wire, which is where this cable goes to, so just be careful you don't snag that. More screws. So each key set has a module here, which is, they look like they're in octaves, and there's three screws per octave. So the problem here was um, on this octave here, and what I ended up doing when I opened this last time was I kind of figured out what was going on. It wasn't dust, uh, it was a bit more, it needed a replacement part, but what I found is I could actually swap that part with another octave, so I just moved the problem further up. I did make the problem worse, but that's fine, because I've got the part now. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the top octave and swap that part and show you that part. Um, because the, the G is fine right now. So it's just three screws and these are different again. Okay, and the, oh there's four on this one, okay. That's connected there. So this last octave has four screws, but the others seem to have three. Can I remove this? So I've removed the screws here and all that's left is three little things which you can use a flathead screwdriver for. Be really careful, you just wanna lift them slightly. Just a little push. Just giving the screwdriver a little twist. And it just pushes the whole thing out. And now the keys pop off. So that's like a, the end module, which I think has an extra key compared to the others. Yes, it does. Okay, Okay. so uh, this is the key mechanism here. We've got the hammers here, which are kind of covered in grease. Um, but yeah, they just, and that gives a really nice tactile feedback and it works really well. This is just all this mechanism here. It just does all it does is feel. It doesn't do anything for the electronics or the sound. So what's happening here is these two rubber or silicon pads. I think they probably are. These are getting pressed every time you press a key. You can see that on the end one here. Now when you press them down, there's two sensors in there. They press down at different times. The, f the bottom will engage first when you press the key and then the top will engage after and because there's a delay in the height there's a change in the height there's a delay when those sensors get pressed when you press it down and from that the electronics can figure out how fast you press the key which means they can figure out dynamics um, but basically all you have to do here is now often a lot of these videos they say oh there's loads of dust in here and the dust is often getting in the way of the sensors but and you can see in this design, the sensors are completely covered by the silicon sock. So I'm gonna take the silicon off and we'll see here we've got our carbon sensors. So what these are, these are screen printed um, carbon ink on top of the PCB in a U shape. So we've got two sensors, one on top and one on the bottom. 
And then what you have is in the silicon pad here, you have two carbon pads. Essentially, when I shorted these two with a piece of copper, the key worked, um, which meant that it was these pads here uh, that were the problem. So what I did is first I got some isopropyl alcohol and I tried to clean the pads with a cotton bud. And what I did is I actually made the problem worse. So I ended up then with problems across several keys when I put it back together, which is a bit of a nightmare really. I tried cleaning the board as well, that didn't do anything. When I was cleaning it, all I was doing was taking carbon, more carbon off these silicon pads here. And that carbon is needed to make the connection at these points. So I went onto the Korg website and for, I think it was seven pounds, they sent me a new rubber strip. I ended up buying three or four because I reckon other parts of the keyboard will probably wear out. So all I'm gonna do is put the new rubber strip in instead of the old one, put the keys back together and hopefully that's, you know, the keyboard works. So how did I know that this was the problem and it wasn't something else? The, the simple way to check this is to not mess around with it, take another octave out. So I took the octave that was wrong and I took the top octave out because I don't use it and I swapped the pads around. And then I found that the problem had moved from the one octave down to this octave now. So that was how I knew and that's how you can diagnose this problem is just swap the pads around really carefully. They've got little um, kind of registration points here which these all need to go in place correctly don't get any dirt inside here and I wouldn't even clean it just just don't mess with it really don't get any dust in it don't get it on the grease here so I'm just gonna swap the new silicon pad around put it back together and done you want kind of want this front gray strip to go in the gap and then these parts here they need to go in the gap between where the hammer mechanism starts so you kind of go in at an angle like this. There we go, it's dropped in there and you'll feel it. It'll just click, it'll just not click in, but it'll it'll sit right. There's no, no need to force anything here. What you've got to be really careful of here is that when you press down on here, you don't push the keys forward. Because if you push them forward, I know it's really hard to see, they move the rubber. See when they go down? If you go down, and then push the keys forward just to push to click them on what it'll actually do is it'll push the rubber off course and they won't sit right I just want to make sure that I'm not I haven't compressed any of those pads just before I click it in place there we go that one's popped out there so just a little note there which is really important probably to putting this back together correctly so it's sitting right there we go there's like a little sliding slightly further back and then just clicks in place. No heavy movements. So yeah, it's uh, it's fully working now. Works, which is great. So it's a great keyboard to be honest, and for 100 pounds plus the replacement parts, you know, I've got myself a Korg. It's an 88 key keyboard. It works as a MIDI controller as well, because it's got a MIDI out, so I can use it with my door. So for 100 pounds, you just can't really go wrong. And so if anyone else sees anything out there, pick it up rather than buying you. I definitely think that's the best way to go. And uh, yeah, fix it, don't throw it away.